Hi, my name is Ernest and in this video tutorial I am going to show you step by step how to create this nice WooCommerce search engine using only Ajax Search Pro and nothing else. So first off let's go to your site backend into the and click the Ajax Search Pro menu. Let's create a new search bar. I'm just going to call this WooCommerce search. Let's start from there. Now click the gear icon to access the search settings. And we'll go step by step slowly so we don't miss any settings, okay? So first off, since we are going to search products, uh, we don't want these here in the search sources. So don't want pages and posts. Those are the default settings. And we'll scroll down and choose products. You may have more, you may have less options here. I have a lot of stuff installed here. So I will have to scroll down and find the product and drag it here. Perfect. Now, or we have a search bar. If we just test it, searching products. See, there you go. Uh, this is a little bit different from what we want. So let's continue. Okay, I'm just gonna move this right here. So we have space. And let's continue. So what is the next step? How about we start with the filters right there? I think that's, that's the next one. That's the closest one. So let's go and go for the front end search settings and general. What we want to do is set the search settings visible by default. So we want them to be visible all the time and that they don't hover, but they're displayed as a block below the search. Okay, right. If I refresh, there's nothing here because we don't have any filters. So let's continue and create categories and taxonomy terms filters first. Uh, what we have here, okay, is categories, product color, product size and price. So let's see if I have these. I think I have the same exact, you know, uh, products installed here, sample products. So let's go and go for product categories, right? That was one of them. Then it was product, what was it? Color, right? And also the product size. So what I'm doing here is just use all. I'm just dragging all of them. You can choose to, you know, drag one by one and set the states of the filters. But right now, all I'm going to do is just grab all of them. Okay, now let's refresh. How are we looking right now? We have some filters here. But if I go back, like the product categories is like a drop down with search, the color is stays uh, checkboxes and the product size is like a radio button. So let's fix that. So here's this blue button change display mode. And each of the selected filter uh, taxonomies are here. So first up was the product categories. It was like a drop down with search, right? And also the color that stayed, I think that was uh, checkboxes and the product size that was a radio. Of course, you can choose anything you want. Feel free to experiment with these options. But I think this is going to be really close to what we have here. Let me check. Uh, yeah, I think so. Although this one doesn't have anything selected and this one has a select all and this one has an any size. So let's mine that. Let's go back to the display mode and set the select all and choose any option. I'm not going to rename these. And also uh, for the product categories, the display choose one and any option. So if I refresh, yep. Yep. I have the same exact thing now. See, okay. Now let's now move on. And what we have here is a price filter and price is stored in a custom field. So let's just go into a custom field and call this price, right? And the price, if I just type it in, it's going to help me. And this is the one you're looking for the price. Okay. And it's post meta, right? And what we want is uh, either you can go with like a number range if we want to type it in, but I prefer the range slider and in the slider range, if you empty these, then the plugin is going to like get the minimum, the maximum price value and automatically uh, put it there. So what we're going to go, uh, what we're going to do is click add. See now refresh and here we go. Okay. So it's a little bit like, you know, it looks like this. It's almost exactly the same as on the example, right? If I do change this, I'm going to get, you know, the corresponding results, right? So we have the filter. 
I recommend saving now because we don't want to lose this progress and just go back. And what's next? We need to change the results layout to something different, you know, because right now we have this default vertical results, which are quite nice, but what we want to replicate this exact layout. And for that, first off, I'm going to go to the theme and styling, and I'm just going to choose a different theme with a predefined vertical results layout. I could just stay with this one. The default one is the simple red, so I can just go like simple red horizontal. So whatever you do, just choose a horizontal theme, right? You can choose whichever you want, just choose one that ends like with the horizontal. And now when I do a search, see, now I'm getting these uh, different boxes. Although there is this scroll bar that is not present here on the demo. So we want to get rid of it. So let's go to the horizontal results. And let's just turn off the scroll bar. And let's see what's going to happen. So it's still like drops down, but it's not what we want. We don't really want these these hovering results, although they I think they look cool. But as you can see, this is uh, this is completely printed into the page. So what we want to do is go into the layout settings and results layout and fields, and just change the results position from hover to block, and that's gonna change a lot. So now if I do an empty search, oh uh, I wish it would change. Oh, it did change. Okay, just the background is red. Okay, let's just change that to a transparent. Okay, in this theme, the background is is uh, not transparent. It's red. So what you can just do is just drag this little slider under the theme styling horizontal results. Scroll down results container background color, and just drag it here. Click choose, refresh. And let's do a test search. See, we are getting getting very, very close. While we are here on this, these styling options, let's just change the... I think everything is set correctly here. What, what I recommend to do is like set the border to, to this item border to zero and uh, the image border to zero because that is the exact setup. So take a mental picture and replicate this. And let's go up a bit and change the width to 25% for uh, mobile devices, 33% for, uh, I mean, 25% for like desktop, 33 for tablet and 50% for mobile devices. What's that going to do is create this same layout where the width of the items is set in percentages based on the screen size. So let's do a refresh, let's do a search. And now it should show three columns, exactly the width of the search or its container. So when I change this, see, see, now it switches to four columns. Uh, I would also adjust, uh, as I'm looking at this, I would also adjust the height of the images. So maybe it should go like something bigger with uh, maybe like 250 for desktop. I'm not sure. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Oh, well, I think it's a little bit too much. So how about we go with something like 220? Uh, let's go 200 or maybe 180 for the tablet and 150 for the, the mobile. So, so let's see how does this work out? Yeah, it, it looks much better. It, it looks much better. So now we have like the design as it is. Uh, it looks like the boxes are very similar. Now, all we are missing is all this star rating, price, add to card, category, color, whatever. So how do we add that? So before we continue, again, save. We need to save this, all right? And let's go now to the advanced options and into the content and fields panel. And a little bit scroll down a little bit and here's the advanced description field for post type results this is what we need this is where we're going to add these uh, extra fields which we don't have right now see now now it's showing okay let me just move it a bit again see so now it's showing the result content this is the content field so it's showing the content we don't want that right we don't need that what we need is 
we want the star rating as first, okay? So to do that, I recommend adding a little, either a paragraph or a div. So I'm just going to go with the paragraph and the cursor is moved automatically right there. Make sure it's like highlighted and uh, click on the insert field and let's go WooCommerce star rating. I'm just going to leave with the defaults. You can play around with it. But now uh, if I hit refresh, I should have a star rating. So we are getting somewhere. And I think the second one was the price and then the add to cart. So we do the same thing. We do add the paragraph, insert, and we go with price. What you want is the default price HTML. This is the one that uh, WooCommerce provides with uh, the, the regular and the sale price and whatever it's, you know, whatever it's present. But you can also choose like price without tax, price with tax and sale price if you want, you know, make this an individual version. So, but I'm just going to use the default price HTML field. Let's hit refresh. Let's see what's happening. Okay, now see, we have this, uh, this uh, price here. And so it's getting really close to what we're looking for. So the next is the add to cart. And for the add to cart, we don't need a paragraph item because it's a, a block. So let's go WooCommerce add to cart. And what I like to do is like display quantity input, right? And save and see if we have the, the add to cart. It's already getting really, really nice. So one thing is left is to add these category size and color. So what we're going to do is like new line, add the paragraph, insert field, and let's go with categories and taxonomy terms. And in the taxonomy, let's choose first is, what was it? I think it was product category. I think so. Uh, where is it? Product categories. There we go. And wait, I'm not going to change anything. You can like discover these uh, settings as you like. Uh, but that's not exactly the output. So let's see. It prints out, you know, decor, clothing, whatever. But what I did there is I said categories and uh, also wrap this in strong. So it's like highlighted and see how this works out. See categories, decor, categories, clothing, categories, accessories. Very nice. We want to do that, like the same step with the, you know, with the, with the color and the size and whatever. And so just to make my work a little bit simpler, I'm just going to grab this, copy, make a new line, paste, and say, which was the next color, I think. Say color, oops. Sometimes it gets a little bit wonky, so mind what, where you're typing color and let's change this to product where is the color pa color save very nice another one i'm just copy pasting again and the the last one it was type or what was it size i think it was size not type um size it wasn't even the, the, the last one but it doesn't matter we're gonna use it here size so let's click and go product size. I think so. Now let's see where we get with this. Okay, now we have this, but as you may notice, uh, th there's a problem. So we probably don't want to show the size where the size is, you know, doesn't exist, where there's no term or color. See, these ones don't have a color, but this has everything. So color and size shouldn't be shown here. And for that, uh, we have this here. Okay, let me move this so we can read it. Conditional shortcode escape tag. Conditional. If a field value wrapped in this tag is empty, it returns an empty string. So this is what we want. We want to wrap each and every single line with this conditional. What is this going to do? It's going to check if this tag or any tag within this, you can use even multiple within this conditional, if it's empty, then this is just going to be empty. It returns an empty string. So let's do that for this as well. So wrap and wrap. You can type it in, whatever. It's just easier for me like this. Let's go like that. And let's see the preview now. Uh, let me make it wider and see now the missing fields are no longer there. 
So this is, I guess, the exact same layout that we have here. Okay, the color of the search is different, but uh, you know, you can change that. But this is what we wanted. So let me quickly save so we don't lose any progress for any reason. And now we have a working search bar. Let's try to put it on a page. So here I'm going to the pages, add the new page, and let's call this WooCommerce search. Okay. And you can use a short code, you can use a block, you can use whatever your theme supports. And so let me add the search and let's see how it looks. Oh, and let's not forget to choose which one it is. And it all, if all goes well, it's already here. Let me publish and let's go, let's go view the page. Okay. Let's see how it looks. Okay. So I have some strange styles applied to this. So please ignore that. But if I do a search, I will get something similar to that. Although you may have noticed that, you know, the, the filters are pushed down, which is probably not what you want. And therefore to fix that, we're going to use the, the, uh, the settings and the results blocks. You can also use the short codes for that. And to find those short codes, you can just go back to the search settings. And here is this, here is the simple, the search short code. This is the search bar. And these are, this is for the results and this is for the settings. These are used to place them separately to separate them from the search and place it anywhere you want on the same page. So this is, this does the exact same thing what we're going to do now. So we have a search we do again, and now we choose the search settings. So they are displayed below the search bar and let's add another block. This is going to be uh, the search results and for the same search bar. So we have the search bar, the search settings and the search results. Now let's save it. Let's go back. It looks almost the same. Let me do an empty search, but Hey, the results are displayed below the search bar. And as you can see, we got like basically the same exact output aside from, you know, some spacing and margin issues, but that's due to, I'm using, you know, some experimental, uh, stuff here. So just ignore that it's exactly the same. And I think we can even test it so I can just go like hoodies. Oh, and there's one more difference, but as you can see it working, when I reload this page, you know, there's initially results displayed. When I reload this page, there's nothing. So there's one additional feature you want to turn on and that's around layout options and in the search box layout, auto populate. This is what one want to auto populate the search with some initial results. Uh, what you can do is like choose a choose results for a search phrase, search phrase, latest random. I think in the example, I have random set. If I reload, there's beanie. If I reload again, there's so I have random. So I'm just going to do that. I will go random results, save. And here we go. And here we go. See, I refresh and there we go. And we have the same exact layout. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it helped you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also if you don't have a license, well, links in the description below. If you have any questions, any concerns, anything at all, well, links in the description below as well. Have a nice day and see you in the next one. Bye bye.